Hi, I am Paul Verhoeven. I am the director of this movie, Flesh and Blood. This is what um, normally is called the director's cut. It's not uh, the way the movie was released in the United States. Uh, because of all the problems with nudity and violence, uh, I was forced by the MPA to cut the movie in, in certain scenes um, down. Um, mostly in the, in the scenes that uh, had to do with sexuality. Uh, notably in the scene uh, with um, Jennifer's Jason Lee's um, rape, but also in many other scenes. And um, also they felt that the violence that I display and that you will see in this movie was too much for a normal audience. So in many cases the cuts are, are not perceptible so much, but if you put the two versions together, the old one as it was released in the United States, that you might still find on some old video or something, and the new version, this one, you have the movie that you see and that you will see is as explicit as I originally intended it to be. So um, this was my first um, what you would call American movie if you want to use that word although it was of course mostly shot in Europe and basically was financed by Orion to, for 80-90% was financed also by the Dutch and by the Spanish. It was my uh, fifth movie I think that I did with Rutger Hauer. Um, we had done Turks Delight, Katie Tipple, Soldier of Orange and Spatters together and this was the fifth movie as I said. It was also the last movie I did with Rutger. This is says Western Europe 1501. We are really in the middle of Spain here and this is the city of Avila which is a couple of hours from Madrid to the east. The walls that you see and everything um, is, are still there, you can visit them, it's a really beautiful city from the outside. The inside is not much there, so we used mostly the walls here um, to establish a city. Of course we had no money to, 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 um, to build something than the tents that you see here and there. And the budget of the movie was six and a half million dollars. Uh, five and a half being provided by um, by Orion six perhaps a half a million by the Dutch and half a million by the Spanish so um, the cardinal this we call him the cardinal he is probably an ex-priest and he gives here the Eucharist to everybody before battle these people are supposed to be Catholic probably all of them um, in the background we see one of the other, uh, let's say, main strange characters in the movie called Celine, who is in love with Martin and might have his child. She is pregnant, although it could be also a child of the whole group of people. I mean, she she's certainly kind of a, uh, described like a, a prostitute or half of that. This is Jack Thompson, an Australian actor that you might all remember from Breaker Moran and um, Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence. Um, uh, he is um, he plays the, the captain of the soldiers the fact that these two uh, men Mil and Orbeck that you just saw there one of them is Bruno Kirby an American actor very well used by Barry Levinson in many of his movies um, they are they are asking for the, for the Eucharist although the uh, Cardinal is hesitant to give it to them indication and the way he talks that they are homosexual and Martin is introduced here, taking the Eucharist out, the host out of the callus. Uh, so indicating his autonomy and his uh, fact that he, yes, he goes to the moves, but it's all just in his own, he does things in his own way. He is the real, the, the adventurer of the movie. He's the center of the movie. He is the one that basically leads us through the movie. And I think he's the character that is, although often extremely unsympathetic in some way, as, as a rough rogue, also shows some, uh, some nice sides. Come back! You didn't pay me! I'll pay you from the spoils! Keep this little spot warm for me, Polly. It's never been cold! Let's go to work! Come on! 
this is, so this is the beginning of the battle. You see on the left, the woman that was there is Marina Saura. She was a Spanish actor. The man that walks away from us is, is um, um, the character of Summer. It is Dennis Johnston. And next to Rutger here, we have uh, Brian James, um, who um, died a couple of years ago. He was also with Rutger in the movie Blade Runner. He's uh, together with Rutger. Both are mutants. This is Tom Burleson, another um, Australian actor. Um, he is, of course, a young, kind of a young Da Vinci. He, as you all know, Da Vinci was not only famous because of his paintings and everything he did in the arts, but also because he was an inventor. He made many plans, even for planes and whatever, for submarines, uh, many things, um, uh, let's say siege instruments, how to attack a city, how to get into a city, and we'll later see that uh, that Stephen is using that, Stephen is his character name, that is using that to get into the castle in the second part of the movie. Here he has an invention, uh, let's say a, a rolling bomb, you could call it, and somebody is volunteering to see how it works. He, it, the, the invention is apparently not completely perfect because um, the guy explodes uh, before he reaches the, the gate. Later, in the latter part of the movie, this thing will come back, this is rolling bomb, and then it's used by Martin, who copied um, Stephen's invention and did a better job because he blows up the attack machine that's, that Stephen at that time has built. So it's a recurrent thing. Um, of course, this is uh, then um, a failure, but we'll see that he has other inventions, uh, Stephen. Some of them will work and otherwise won't, you know. Like with Da Vinci's uh, inventions, he never got a plane flying, of course. So, in interesting, um, when you see, this is of course uh, aristocratic thinking here, uh, uh, the other people should do the dying and we are getting the money. So that's a capitalist or, or normal um, attitude of people e even now or, um, or exactly now, I could say. The moment that uh, the doors of the, of the, uh, the, the walls, uh, doors in the walls open, I don't know exactly why they opened, because we never found a solution to that and we had no time to ram them. So somehow they are suddenly open, and I'm, I'm sorry, but it's not uh, just as it is. And we are cutting here directly uh, from the outside of Avila to the inside of another city to the southeast of Madrid, about six hours away from Madrid. The city is called Cáceres. It's a beautiful medieval city that is still completely intact and all the scenes in the city are shot there in Cáceres. Um, you, I, I think I can certainly um, advise you, if you're ever in Spain, to visit that city. is one of the few cities that is in the center because it was built on a hill and they could not extend it uh, because there was only limited space. That is still um, mostly intact, has beautiful cathedrals and a very good, um, let's say, or, um, medieval houses, streets and whatever. Here's the situation described between um, Jack Thompson and Rutger Hauer. He is, um, of course, the, uh, Jack um, Hawkwood, he is called, is the, is the captain of, um, of, of Martin. And the original script, when it was still at the Laird Company, was uh, really different from what you see now in the movie. Originally, this movie was about the friendship and then the hate between Hawkwood and, and Martin. It was about two men, basically a little bit like uh, in the Wild Bunch. It was about two men that basically are friends, and you see, you just saw here that Rutger saves his life, that are where Martin ultimately, um, in the beginning of the movie, and that's still the same, is betrayed by Hawkwood, who to save uh, the woman that he uh, nearly um, kills here, to save that woman, is forced by Arnolfini to attack his friend Martin and to go with all the machinations that Arnolfini has really already in his head here, although he promised the soldiers that they could loot the city for 24 hours. Of course, he has no intention to do so, and Hawkwood agrees to that because of the money, because of the girl, and he betrays Martin, and that was the essence of the original script. 
It was really between Hawkwood and Rutger uh, Martin, how they behave, how they fight each other, how that um, who wins of the two. Then that script, uh, as we wrote that, was not accepted by the lad company. They felt that um, Agnes and Stephen, that in the original script were more peripheral to the situation, um, should be more uh, to the middle, that at least it should be a triangle between uh, Martin, Stephen, and Agnes. And uh, um, because mm, being impressed by the knowledge of the American studios, we agreed to do that. Um, I'm not so sure that that was really the right decision. Um, but that is how it was developed further. So it became a triangle. And by that process, Hawkwood was more moved to the side. So um, that um, his character was diminished. Um, of course, before we cast him, he got, the he got the character already when it was uh, more limited. So um, the triangle between the three of them, between Steve Agnes and, and um, Martin, is probably still not exactly what the studio uh, wanted because it's, although supposed to be romantic, it's in reality uh, very cynic and it's mostly about survival. And all three of them seem to perhaps less so uh, Stephen, but certainly Martin and Agnes, seem really to be driven by one instinct, which is how to survive. As Rutger um, Martin um, says uh, in, the next, in one of the next scenes, when he meets uh, Stephen, that's how, what I learned, how to survive. And the movie seems to be a complete, completely Nietzschean um, um, analysis or Nietzschean vision on reality, people are just driven by their instinct to survive, or you should perhaps be, call it also Darwinian. Um, anyhow, it's not what we expect probably of an American movie nowadays, certainly not nowadays, where everything has to be wonderful and positive, and where the darker sides of humankind are, uh, let's say, uh, projected uh, to strangers, and certainly not visible in the characters of our American heroes. Uh, but here we are in pre-Taliban, pre-Al-Qaeda territory. And so we can just show people, um, be the Americans or be the Australians, be them Dutch or Spanish, see them for what they are, bad. There is some hope in the movie, but very little. Anyhow, here, here Arnolfini starts his machinations and pushes um, uh, Hawkwood to follow him and... Uh, Etc. You sh um, talking. Uh, if you look at the scene, um, look, look at all the nudity scenes of the movie. You will um, realize that the movie, as it is now in the director cut, is really different from uh, what was released ultimately in the United States. Uh, this was my first confrontation with the MPA and uh, certainly not the last. With all my movies, with the exception, in fact, of. Uh, Hollow Men, which they gave an R immediately, and Showgirls, which they axed, or that was called NC-17 at the moment. But uh, all the other movies, Robocop, Total Recall, uh, Basic Instinct, Starship Troopers were originally given an X or an NC-17 and had to be cut uh, by me uh, to an R. And this was the first time that it happened that was partially the violence that is a little bit reduced, although um, the MPA, of course, is less, has much less problems with ultimate violence than with ultimate sex. Um, therefore, of course, all the sexual scenes, all the scenes with, let's say, nudity that was used in the sexual content had to be cut um, uh, strongly. Um, if you compare, for example, later the scene of um, Agnes rape, to the scene that is was in the American uh, version, you can see that it was strongly uh, the, the 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 nudity and and the violence in the uh, the, the sexual violence was uh, strongly reduced by the cutting of the MPA. Um, we have already introduced the cardinal and uh, Celine. Um, here, basically, she tries to convince Martin that it is his baby, which is probably not the truth, although he gracefully seems to accept that to a certain degree. Um, at the same time, the cardinal um, starts to display